Hello, sixth graders, once again. This is Mr. Wallace coming to you from my house instead of the planetarium. I hope that you were able to learn a few things with yesterday's lesson on the solar system, maybe quite a bit of review, uh, but hopefully you had a chance to get that crossword puzzle PDF and turn that back into your teachers. If you haven't done so yet, you got to get that done. You know, you got to keep track of, of what you're supposed to do at school. So hopefully you can get that in really soon. So yesterday I mentioned to you an extraordinary thing that's going to be happening in our sky very soon. And this is Tuesday the 15th. And as of the 15th tonight, I'm going to show you what this guy looks like. But then I want to show you what is going to happen about a week from now on the 21st. It happens to be our winter solstice. But there is something extraordinary happening that hasn't happened in your lifetime or mine. Um, it hasn't happened for hundreds of years. And I want you to see this. I want you to get out and, and have a chance to see what's going on in our sky. What's all this? You maybe have even heard about this a little bit on TV. A lot of the news uh, shows are, are talking about it. It's, um, it's an occurrence that doesn't come around very often. It's called a planetary conjunction. Now, a conjunction is when two things come close together. And in our sky, from our perspective here on planet Earth, Jupiter and Saturn are going to come extremely close to each other. If you go out tonight, if it's not cloudy, get out there tonight and take a look. And take a look at them over the next many nights. And what you will see is the gap between the two planets looks like it almost completely closes. They will get closer and closer together as the 21st approaches. So what I'm going to do today is to show you um, a, a different program that I did yesterday, one called Stellarium. You can see it at the top of my window there just above my head. Uh, Stellarium. It is a free program. You can download it on download it into your personal computer. Uh, it is a very powerful planetarium software. And uh, in fact, some planetariums use this as their projection system. It's free and it, it is uh, what I showed you yesterday with the solar system scope. That's very cool. In fact, uh, there is a planetarium setting in solar system scope as well. But Stellarium, I think, is more powerful. It's been around longer and uh, it's it's crazy what you can do with it. So check it out. That's what I'm going to, going to use um, first anyway. I am going to bounce back to solar system scope in uh, a few minutes to show you why this is happening. But I want to show you what it's going to look like first. So let me get my window out of the way here. I'll shrink this out a little bit. Move it over here to the side. And okay. So here's the Stellarium window. The interface is down here along the bottom and it allows you to change settings, to change dates, to change times. Uh, over here, there's more settings, more things to explore. I'll let you do that. It's, um, if, if you're interested, it, there, I don't know that there's a better program out there than Stellarium to use to visualize the sky. So what I have right here is the little time window that I can change the date and so forth. This is 24 hour time. Uh, the, the hour 1700 or the hour 17 would be 5 p.m. 17 is five hours beyond 12 p.m. That's when uh, it would be based on. So this would be five o'clock uh, with a few seconds here as well, but 5 p.m on the 15th, which is today, if you're watching it when you're supposed to be watching it. <laughs> so at any rate, um, we have 5 p.m. now. The, the sun is setting uh, right around 4.30 each day. And so if we are at 5 p.m., the sun has already uh, passed the horizon here. And it's starting to get dark, but not quite dark enough for what I want to show you. So I am going to skip ahead in time here a little bit till it gets till the sky starts to darken at about 530. And now at 530, you should be able to see the two planets, Saturn and Jupiter. And you can see them there on the screen. This is where they will be over in the southwest, kind of over where the sun is setting just a little bit further south than that. But Jupiter is extremely bright. It's 12 times brighter than Saturn, so you won't have any trouble seeing it. 
but Saturn is, ju is just to the left of it. Now, as we go from the 15th all the way to the 21st, you can see that gap right there is, is pretty close to start with, but it becomes even less. Watch this. So here we go, the 16th, 17th, and you can see the moon passing by right here. Uh, here comes the 18th, 19th. Jupiter is now moving to the left uh, much faster uh, or uh, getting very close to Saturn. And on the 20th, it looks like it's almost there. On the 21st, it looks like they are almost touching. Now, if you have average vision, you should be able to see the separation between the two planets still. It'll be very small. In fact, it will be so small, it's only one-tenth of one degree. Now, how do you measure that? If you've ever looked at a full moon, you can stick your arm out at, uh, at full length and, and hold up your pinky and line up your eye so that it faces uh, the moon. Now, the moon is a half of a degree in, in, um, across the face of the moon. It's a half a degree. And so when you hold your pinky up, it's about half of your pinky. Now, my pinky's bigger than yours, but your arm is shorter, so it works out. And so if you hold up that pinky, uh, you should see the moon is about half the width of your pinky. That's a half a degree. Well, the separation between Jupiter and Saturn, it's only one-tenth of a degree. So that's taking your finger and dividing it up into ten slices, and, and only one of one tenth of the width of your little finger is what you will see between Jupiter and Saturn. Now that's obviously a very small uh, separation. But let me zoom in here a little bit because as we zoom in, you'll see that separation uh, somewhat grows because we are magnifying that, right? And if you have a pair of binoculars, this is the night to use them. Go out, 5.30, between 5 and 5.30, well, even after sunset, uh, even if it isn't dark, you should still, you should start to be able to see Jupiter. And what you will notice if you use your binoculars, and if you have a telescope, that's even better. Most people have binoculars on, they're easy to use. So point them right at Jupiter, and you're going to see some dots, some bright dots. Well, these are four of Jupiter's many moons. Jupiter uh, has these four moons that, that were discovered by Galileo. They're called the Galilean moons. They each have uh, their own names, Callisto, Ganymede, Europa, and Io. And this is the way that they are lined up on the 21st. See, Ganymede is very close to the, 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 the Saturn planet, uh, um, actual planet. But Ganymede is the largest moon in our in our solar system. Uh, but anyway, let me stay on track here. Um, the it, Again, if you use your binoculars, you should be able to see Jupiter and Saturn in the same field of view. Now, you won't see them this magnified or this clear with a pair of binoculars. Uh, you'll need a telescope. Uh, but in a telescope, a, a decent-sized telescope, you should be able to see the planets and the moons very similar to that. Uh, but anyway, th so I, I also want you to keep in mind this distance between Jupiter and Saturn is only one tenth of a degree in our sky, but they're actually hundreds of millions of miles apart. They are 400, over 400 million miles apart between uh, the distance between Jupiter and Saturn. So Saturn is much further away. I mean, the sun, we're 93 million miles away from the sun. So just round that to 100 million. Well, Saturn is 400 million miles beyond Jupiter. And yet you can still see it in the sky. It's very bright. Um, and, and, and again, on this night, there they are very close. Let me go back out to what you would see just from the ground and um, and see that, that separation there a little bit. Okay, now, um, why does this happen? How, how is it that Jupiter and Saturn become so close in our sky? Well, let me open up that solar system scope program for you again. I'm gonna disappear as soon as it gets on our screen and um, and I, I just want to show you how the or why this happens. Why is it visually so close? Why are they so close in the sky? 
All right, and here we go. This would jump right here to uh, the date. I'm recording this a few days earlier than the 15th, but uh, let me skip ahead to the 21st and show you exactly the orientation of the planets. Now you saw this yesterday when I was showing you around the solar system, but on the 21st, look at this. If you drew a line, if you put a laser beam between Earth and Jupiter, look, it would almost like almost perfectly line up with Saturn. So as we are here on the dark side of Earth, once the sun goes past the horizon and we look off in this direction, look how close they are, almost a perfect straight line. Now, again, that's just because of our visual position, uh, nothing more than that. Uh, do other planets have conjunctions? Absolutely. Mars and Jupiter and in Saturn, the, the planets that we can see, there's all kinds of planetary conjunctions that happen throughout the course of time. But uh, this one is so extraordinary because they are so close to each other. And, and again, this hasn't happened for 800 years. The next time it's going to happen is actually uh, about 60 years from now. And I don't think they're going to be as close together as they are this time. So uh, if you get a chance, get out, take a look, use binoculars, look for that extraordinary event happening in our sky, Jupiter and Saturn conjunction. And, uh, but think also about that depth, that difference between the distance from, from Jupiter and Saturn. So that's really uh, all I wanted to show you today. Uh, I am going to follow up with, with one question here uh, using Ed Puzzle. Something that I said uh, about the separation uh, between the, the two planets, and uh, I'm going to follow that up with one question. It's going to be worth 10 points. All you have to do is uh, submit that work to your teachers, and, and you'll get the credit for it. So get out now. Go out tonight and, and take a look and see the distance between them and try to visualize the fact that Jupiter is moving to the left and, 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 and then go out on every clear night and you'll see that gap closing, closing. And on the 21st, they cross. On the 22nd, Jupiter will be to the left of Saturn. Uh, we, like I talked about yesterday, kind of being on a big track and Jupiter's lane is is much smaller than Saturn. So it it goes faster and it will literally pass uh, Saturn from our perspective. So uh, and then every night it will be a little bit further to the left. Next summer, when we see Jupiter and Saturn in the sky, Jupiter will be quite a bit further to the left uh, over those next few months. So. Get out and enjoy this site, kids. Don't miss it. Drag your family out there. Uh, it's something that um, I think you'll enjoy seeing, and, and I don't want you to miss it. And then uh, as far as the planetarium goes, maybe um, maybe later on this school year when we come back to school, cross our fingers. But hopefully you can get back into the planetarium and we can talk some more about this event and whether or not you saw it and then uh, continue on with our studies in astronomy in the planetarium. I sure hope that happens. So until then, take care, do your work, see you later.